Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. December 14th, 2017. Now I know what to get VB for Christmas, you know, this year. Are we on now? Oh, we're on? Okay. Uh, 205 here on the great WRKO. Jeff Cooner, Boston's bulldozer, cleaning up the liberal bull. Okay, my friends. Politico is the one that broke the story. However, uh, Paul Ryan is now insisting that this is not true, that these rumors are false. Uh, in fact, I got a text from a good friend of mine in Wisconsin who's got great contacts in Ryan's office. And according to what Ryan's office told her, that this is quote-unquote fake news. President Trump and Sarah Huckabee Sanders were coming out saying no. They spoke to Ryan. He says it's not true. So we're going to have to find out who's right and who's wrong. But if you haven't heard it, uh, it broke a couple hours ago, according to Politico, AP, Reuters, uh, Fox News went with the story. Paul Ryan apparently is telling us, told confidants, according to Politico. In fact, let me read to you exactly what was reported in the Politico piece that Ryan has, quote, made it known to some of his closest confidants that this will be his final term as speaker. In recent interviews with three dozen people who know the speaker, fellow lawmakers, congressional and administration aides, conservative intellectuals, Republican lobbyists, not a single person believed Ryan will stay in Congress past 2018. So the story now is, at least what they're reporting, is that Ryan is going to retire after the 2018 midterm elections. He will step down as the Speaker of the House, and he may actually leave Washington, D.C. and give up his seat altogether. It now appears that Ryan is denying that story, so we're going to find out exactly the next 24 hours. Let me just say this. The sooner you go, the better. And I don't know what it takes, a ton of bricks to fall on this guy's head. The base doesn't want him. The American people don't want him. The overwhelming majority of Republicans don't want him. Nobody wants this guy as the Speaker of the House. He has been one of the most, one of the worst, most horrible, ineffective, incompetent House Speakers in living memory. And forget about his open borders, amnesty, globalist agenda, okay? Or the fact that he's a rabid never-Trumper. Leave all of that off the table. The guy can't even count votes. I mean, I don't think I'm asking for too much for this guy to be able to know, I don't know, grade three mathematics. So he was the one that kept saying we have the votes to repeal and replace Obamacare. They didn't. And issue after issue, he keeps saying, we have the votes, we have the votes. They never have the votes. So this is a man who can't even get basic legislation passed, who can't even count votes in his own party or in his own caucus, and you're telling me this guy's supposed to be the Speaker of the House? Are you kidding me? And then on, on top of that, to me, what is even worse is the way he has done everything in his power to sabotage the Trump agenda every step of the way. And I'll tell you one thing he is going to get past, come hell or high water. He may not get tax cuts passed. He definitely won't get repeal and replace Obamacare passed. But I'll tell you what he will get passed. That you can take to the bank. And that is going to be amnesty for the so-called DACA beneficiaries. Okay, Amnesty for the dreamers. That is... He's going to get passed. When it comes to being a corporate shill, when it comes to being a puppet of the Chamber of Commerce and the donor class, nobody is better than Paul Ryan O'Ryan. That, I got, I got to say this. The guy can be, a, when it comes to being a political whore, nobody can whore like Paul Ryan. Oh, this guy, say what you want. When you pay him to do something, he does it. I mean, he does it. He lies on his back, and he lies there good. 
So I'm looking at this guy who can't even get basic legislation passed, who can't even get his people to vote on issues, who can't even count votes. Buddy, what do you need? I, I mean, really, what do you need? A bullhorn to tell you it's time for you to go? And whether the story is true or not, and it just may be more fake news, the thing is, I know Political loves Paul Ryan. He's now become, for the liberal media, they're almost their favorite Republican, right after John McCain and Jeff Flake and Bob Corker. But I think what you see in that piece is they want him to go. I think when they're talking to all these people, they're almost like, well, he really can't stay beyond the 2018 midterms. He's really got to go. And I think why they're saying this is pretty obvious to me is they can see a potential Democratic tidal wave building next year. What they're essentially saying is, after we get shellacked in the 2018 midterms, and maybe Nancy Pelosi becomes Speaker of the House again, he's going to have no choice but to go. I think that, if you're reading the tea leaves, I think this is pretty obvious, these rumors and all this grumbling. And let me ask you, When I mention to you Trump and his inability to get much of his agenda across, do you blame him or do you blame Ryan McConnell? Because I know who I blame. So here you have a House Speaker with huge majorities, majorities as well in the Senate, and they basically can't get anything done. So you're not able to do your job. If you're not able to do your job, buddy, get somebody else. And it's because of this paralysis up on Capitol Hill, this constant inability to get anything done or anything passed, this constant effort to sabotage or undermine Trump and the America First agenda that has now so poisoned Republicans against Speaker Ryan that now he's almost becoming the poster child for the do-nothing Congress. And so the Rep- the Republicans are going to be in big trouble next year, not because of Trump and not because of Trumpism, but because of the lack of Republicans passing the Trump agenda. And to me, the man most responsible for this, yes, the Democrats are obstructionists, no question about it, Pelosi, Chuck U. Schumer, the whole gang. I get it. I get it. But they're not running the House. They're not controlling Congress. The Republicans are. Paul Ryan is the House Speaker. Mitch McConnell is the Senate Majority Leader. Don't look at them. Don't blame the Democrats. You want something done, look at them. But you can't. Don't look at them for leadership. You can't look at them for leadership because they're not showing any leadership. And so, to me, the sooner he goes, the better. If it's a rumor, too bad, because it shouldn't be a rumor. 617-266-6868. Paul Ryan, apparently now, according to some press reports, is on his way out. He plans to resign. Uh, step down after the 2018 midterm elections. What do you think this means? And are you sorry to see him go? Or does this pretend that now many Republicans sense that the Republican majority is in serious danger and in jeopardy? David in New Hampshire, you're up next. Go ahead, David. Yes, I do. And um, thank you for letting me have a chance to voice my opinion here. Um, but me, I listen to your show every day. It's a great show. I'm really, I've lost my faith in this country. And, um, you know, if I think, you know, we're involved, the drug is gone. I think it's right there in Congress. I think they're on something. And my girl was just mentioning her. She was saying, you know, we're talking about Paul Ryan really didn't even want the job. He went to step down a while ago. And he asked, I believe he was asking his wife and his family if he should stay or go because, I think he's had problems with his family in his own life, like many of us. And people don't want to look in the mirror and realize it starts with the man in the mirror, you know. Um, 
And right down the line, but Congress, it's like, it's a joke. This country is really going down the tubes. Um, you know, and it was for us, we've had so many problems. This year has been crazy for us, you know, as Americans. We have no rights. And now, I guess it, what they're saying now is that Obama is being, being paid right now as he's not working. That's on the news right now. White House briefing, as tax bill there is the final vote. They're saying Obama is still being paid. He's not in the White House. What's up with that? Uh, uh, David, but, um, David, thank you for that call. Yep. Uh, look, to me, what I find unbelievable, no, really, you want to see how incompetent this guy is? The guy doesn't even know how to retire or resign properly. I mean, you don't blab, if the story is true, you don't blab to three dozen people out said, I'm done. You know, I can't do this. I can't, I can't run the caucus. I can't corral the votes. I just can't seem to get things done. I'm at odds with the president. We don't see eye to eye. Uh, I don't like this job. Too much pressure, too much stress, too much work. I'm away from my family, blah, 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 blah. And then after it's leaked to the press, and everybody's going around, everybody's saying, well, okay, I guess Ryan's out after 2018, then, well, hold on now, hold on, haven't made a final decision yet, whoa, whoa, this may be fake news. Buddy, you don't even know how to freaking resign properly, that's how incompetent you are. Like, either you're resigning or you're not resigning. Either you're stepping down or you're not stepping down. That's what I'm saying about the guy. He's a loser. He's a loser on every level. Look, he's got one strength, and I don't know how this guy managed to do it, but with the help of Fox News and the establishment Republicans, you know, Carl Rove, Charles Krauthammer, all these guys, they kept talking about the Paul Ryan wing of the Republican Party. What wing? What voters does he command? He can barely win his own district. So what wing? There is no wing. What following does this guy have? Except for a few talking heads on Fox News and a couple of these uh, conservative, so-called conservative news magazines. Outside of that, he's got nothing. Nothing. The only thing he's good at, and somehow as a political entrepreneur, he managed to parlay that, uh, transform that, into like being some kind of a big representative or power within the Republican Party, which is in everybody's imagination, but anyway, is that he's good at crunching numbers. Like on the budget committee. He's like, you know what he is? He should have been an accountant. Like he missed his true calling in life. The guy is a very good accountant. Probably was very good at math or whatever when he was in school. That's it. That's it. You look at a balance sheet, the spreadsheet, okay, we're in the red here, we're in the black here, revenues, expenditures, and that's it. The numbers just don't add up. That's what he kept saying under the Obama years for eight years. But the numbers just don't add up. That's it. That's it. So, I don't know, hire him at Merrill Lynch. Hire him at, I mean, I'm not, really, hire him at one of these places to do people's taxes. H&R Block. That's it. He should be a tax analyst at H&R Block. That's what this guy is. This is the guy that we have running our Congress, or in this case, running our House of Representatives. To me, the biggest buffoon on the planet is Joe Biden. So when Mitt Romney announced Paul Ryan to be his VP in 2012, I said, oh, well, listen, we got the vice presidential debate. That one's in our pocket. Oh, oh that one... Put that one in our column. How do you lose a debate to the buffoon Biden? Talk about snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. After I saw that pitiful, pathetic performance, I said, this guy, I'm done with him. I am done with him. And they kept going on about making him House Speaker. I said, the Republicans need him as House Speaker like they need a hole in the head. And so all I'm thinking is this, please, please, God, please don't do this to me. Don't torture me like this with stories that this guy's on his way out and then it turns out to be false. Don't do this. What did I do to deserve this? To me, the only problem here is that he's not resigning or retiring now. 
Fred in New Hampshire. You're up next. Go ahead, Fred. How you doing, Jeff? How are you, Fred? Excellent. Thank you. You know, you're absolutely right. Ryan should have been gone a long, long time ago. He is no hook spot. He doesn't have any guts to do the, the right thing. And that's part of the problem. That's why Trump can't get anything done. He should be gone and about 10 of those other so-called leaders. They should all be gone. I'm with you. Uh, look, as one of the texters put it, the only wing he represents is the wing of K Street. Bingo. K Street's where all the lobbyists are. That's the only wing he represents. And to be very candid with you, I think that's why much of the media kept propping him up. Because if you want one of the number one swamp creatures, it's him. Jerry on the Cape. Go ahead, Jerry. Comrade. Comrade, how you are, my friend? Oh, man. Hey, cooler man. My anonymous sources tells me Elizabeth Warren has the dossier on you. <laughs> Kentucky Fried Chicken, Diet Coke, Patriot Place, yelling at the kids. Ava, don't hit your brother with a toy in the car. All that stuff. All bad stuff for you. They're going to get you in trouble. <laughs> Jeff, Paul Ryan is part of the Stop Trump movement. That along with the FBI and the DOJ. What about 1994 when he sided with illegal aliens in California to fight the state to get equal rights and get them welfare benefits and everything? He's been at the forefront, Jeff, of illegal immigration since the 1990s. But, Jeff, if I may talk about the FBI and DOJ for a minute. Yes, go ahead, Jerry. The Stop Trump movement, the reason why, beyond hating us deplorables, beyond that, the reason why Trump could not be president is because they know it would lead to the investigation of Hillary Rodham Clinton and the House of Cards would come tumbling down. Mueller, Rosenstein, Holder, all of them, Jeff. And right now on WhiteHouse.gov, there's a petition to petition Jeff Sessions in the Department of Justice to reopen the case against Hillary Rodham Clinton. Uh, Jerry, from your lips to God's ears, my friend. <laughs> Believe me, uh, I, I hope you're right on this one. 617-266-6868. Okay, coming up next, crisis at CNN. Just when you thought they couldn't go any lower. Oh, this one. This one. You want a good laugh? Don't touch that dial. He's the one-man wrecking crew of truth. He's Boston's bulldozer, Jeff Cooner, on the voice of Boston, WRKO. Two twenty-six here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends. Anderson Cooper obviously now caught in a major lie. So, after Roy Moore went down in flames a couple days ago, Trump, as you know, tweeted out. Essentially, in a nutshell, that he had supported Luther Strange uh, in the primary and that he felt that Roy Moore could not win because the deck, the deck was stacked against him. So Anderson Cooper, probably having a couple of drinks, a couple of glasses of Chardonnay, when he saw that tweet, uh, Trump's tweet responded with his own, Oh, really? You endorsed him, you tool. Pathetic loser. So, of course, on his private Twitter account, he called the president a quote-unquote pathetic loser. Well, that's not good for fake news for CNN, because they're supposed to be objective and nonpartisan. That's what they keep saying again and again and again. So, right away, CNN was in desperate panic cover-up mode. So, first, Anderson Cooper, the silver-haired guy, went out and said, No, 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 my Twitter account was hacked. It was hacked. Then, when nobody believed him, because it obviously wasn't hacked, he then came out and said, well, I need somebody to fall on their sword. And so, now, listen to this. They're now blaming, they're now blaming his assistant. They're saying that the assistant accidentally took the phone to a gym for a workout, but then, listen to this, forgot to put in 
the locked passcode. You know, on every iPhone, there's a passcode. You know, you lock it in, and then, you know, you whatever your four-digit passcode is, and that opens up the phone for you. Well, apparently, the assistant was so eager to get the workout in that forgot to sort of put in the locked passcode. So now they're claiming, I swear to you, that some anonymous person at the gym saw the phone just lying there, picked it up, and then was trying to troll Anderson Cooper by calling the president a pathetic loser. Now, there's only one problem. On most iPhones, the locked passcode comes in built into the phone. I mean, I mean guys. <laughs> I mean, again, I mean, it's just, it's more fake news. I mean, it's just incredible. So they're trying to blame the assistant and, you know, with this cockamamie story, and even the cockamamie story people are laughing at. In fact, everybody's saying, commenting everywhere, look, I'm a nobody, and even I have my iPhone, the passcode locked. You're trying to tell me this guy has an unlocked passcode system? Right. Please. My friends, you know what this shows? They're a bunch of liars. And they just got caught again, again, with their deranged hatred of Trump. Here's what happened. He was there with his lover, husband, whatever. They're opening up a nice bottle of Chardonnay or Beaujolais. Yeah, probably, probably Beaujolais. He's got to drink French. Beaujolais. And there they are sipping wine. And he's had a two or three glasses. And then he looks at the tweet and he goes, oh. You endorse them. You SOB, you endorse them. I'm going to teach him a lesson. Eddie, Eddie, watch this. I'm going to show Trump who's boss. You, you pathetic loser. And then suddenly when he woke up the next morning, uh, oops, <laughs> uh, oops, what did I just do? And they do what they do best. Lie, lie, lie. Why? Because they're Democrats. 617-266-6868. Coming up next, a huge food stamp abuse scandal here in Massachusetts. And the person at the center of it, an illegal alien from Ghana. And they won't deport him. I swear to you, that story, next. But first, Evan Heidenrich is in the WRKO newsroom where the tax reform bill is losing support of one senator over the child tax credit. Wow, every vote counts. Evan, who is the senator? Take it away, Evan. 2.36 here on the great WRKO. Jeff Cooner, Boston's bulldozer, cleaning up the liberal bull. Okay, my friends, I say this all the time. We need a real alternative to the liberal, democratic, so-called mainstream media. Well, you've got it in the Boston broadside. It is my favorite publication here in Massachusetts. It is the only conservative publication, frankly, in all of New England. Right now, be the sixth caller, 617-266-6868, and you'll win a free annual subscription to the Boston Broadside. You're going to get 12 monthly issues, as I said, of Boston's only conservative newspaper. Uh, I love this publication. My, my column is there. Uh, every issue, but they do phenomenal investigative reporting, whether it be DCF, whether it be illegal immigration, whether it be welfare fraud and abuse, you name it, the Boston broadside, they cover it. So call now, 617-266-6868 to win an annual subscription to the Boston broadside. And for Christmas, honestly, if you're thinking about a gift for yourself or a family member, Go to the bostonbroadside.com, bostonbroadside.com, find out more. I think it's like $24 a year. It really is an incredible value. And to show you really just how effective this publication is, when it came to exposing Kim Commandos, Kim Driscoll in Salem, 
that hack, and how she was trying to turn Salem into a sanctuary city, they were tr they destroyed copies of the Boston Broadside. She ordered her thugs and hacks to destroy every copy of the Boston Broadside or take them out of the boxes. They she did not want the people of Salem to know, or the boxes themselves, in fact, were stolen because they don't want the broadside delivered in Salem. That's how much the elites in this state fear the broadside. So, uh, like I said, call now, 617-266-6868. You're going to get an annual subscription to the Boston Broadside. And uh, if you can, for Christmas, uh, order, go to, forget me, go to bostonbroadside.com, bostonbroadside.com, and get yourself an annual subscription. Trust me, you're going to be informed, empowered, and you'll really become a true citizen. Okay. A couple of little things before I get on to this unbelievable story in Worcester, which shows you, by the way, what is slowly bankrupting and destroying the state, what the mainstream media here is trying to cover up, the massive welfare fraud, and now food stamp fraud being engaged in by illegal aliens. But before I do that, this is unbelievable. I mean, this is really unbelievable. So, as you know, one of the key people in the Congressional Black Caucus is Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. And, of course, all the libs and all the Democrats, and, frankly, many Republicans, are doing cartwheels over the defeat of Roy Moore by Doug Jones. By the way, I have a column up, a fresh one, on WRKO.com. Uh, please go to it, read my column. The media will turn Trump into the next Roy Moore. It is right up there. You want to see all the media lies about Roy Moore? Boom. It's right there. Anyway, Sheila Jackson Lee, listen to this. Ish. Can you be any stupider? No, really. Like, what a loser. Here is what she tweeted out. Quote, Sweet Home Alabama. Thank you, Alabamians, and, here it comes, Doug Moore. <laughs> Good has prevailed, and our country is on the way to a new day. Hashtag I kneel. She's a big Black Lives Matter supporter and supports all of these football players taking a knee. Doug Moore. Uh, Sheila, it's Doug Jones. <laughs> Roy Moore. <laughs> was the guy he defeated, you know, the one that you hated? Ay, ay, ay. Ay, I swear you couldn't make this stuff up. Okay. Speaking of you can't make this stuff up, so I talked about Anderson Cooper, the silver-haired guy, uh, now obviously caught lying about putting out a tweet, again, exposing him for the rabid anti-Trump hater that he is, calling Trump a pathetic loser. So I mentioned how he first lied about it was hacked, then he said, nah, it wasn't hack because nobody believed him. So now they're trying to blame the assistant by concocting this phony baloney story that the assistant had his phone, but the phone didn't have the passcode locked, and the a guy was working out, and the phone was just left there, and somebody picked up the phone and realized it was Anderson Cooper's phone and, and then tweeted out that tweet calling Trump a pathetic loser. Well, just when you thought they couldn't go lower, the day of the ISIS would-be suicide bomber, the terrorist attack at the subway in New York, okay. the very morning, as the attack is taking place, Fox is covering the attack. What was CNN covering? God as my witness, like I'm in the confessional, that President Trump has a, quote, Diet Coke problem. And why does he have a Diet Coke problem? Because according to a story in the New York Times, which claims Donald Trump drinks 12, a dozen cans of Diet Coke a day. And so CNN does a two-minute piece and is obsessed, uh, they have guests, to discuss Trump's so-called addiction issue, that he's an addict, 
when it comes to drinking Diet Coke, I swear to you, and that is this poisoning his health, and is this making him unfit to be president of the United States? You don't believe me? Roll it, Brittany. Straight out of the bottle, the presidential diet is afloat in Diet Coke. Twelve Diet Cokes, right? Twelve cans per day, according to the New York Times. It even followed him to Japan, where an attendant wearing white gloves waited with a tray bearing the beverage. Some rallied in defense of drinking one dozen Diet Cokes a day, but we asked the nutritionist author of Read It Before You Eat It, what 12 Diet Cokes daily could do to a body. It fills you with bubbles, you get a lot of bloat, the enamel on your teeth. There's also caffeine. What else is it replacing? There's a good chance he's not drinking enough water. But think of all the exercise the president gets pushing the button on his desk so a butler brings him a Coke. The soda was at the center of a mini controversy back in the spring. Trump can't even bother to use a coaster at the Resolute desk for his hourly Coca-Cola injection. Hey, coasters are for wimps, not he-men like the one the women ogled in that old commercial. Make love to you. you can't say the president isn't self-aware. He once tweeted, I have never seen a thin person drinking Diet Coke. After a few more pokes at Coke, he tweeted, I'll still keep drinking that garbage, but 12 a day? Maybe he should dilute every one of his uh, diet sodas down with some sparkling water to try to wean himself off of that habit. Or he could try this. President Trump has a little habit <laughs> of rearranging things in front of him. Maybe he should just keep moving his coke farther and farther till it's out of reach. Ginny Mo, CNN, New York. Now remember, okay, they aired this while there was a terrorist attack going on in New York and international media, Fox News, local media were covering the terrorist attack. By the way, did you catch the little fat jokes they threw in there? The little jabs? But the big one was, can you play the middle of it again? The injection. Get the injection. His injection of Diet Coke. Like he's shooting up heroin or something. Did you catch that? So now, listen to this. He drinks Diet Coke. He has 12 cans a day. Oh, my God. He's an addict. He's an addict. He's shooting up in there. He's injecting himself with Diet Coke. And look what it's doing to his health and all oh, the bubbles and what it does to you and your health. And this, this, the guy's a junkie. We've got a junkie in the White House. So as you know, I'm not in Trump's league. Uh, you know, I don't drink 12 cans a day. I'll have about one or two small bottles a day. I need my caffeine fix. Obviously, he doesn't drink coffee. So when you work 20 hours a day, as he does, right, you need caffeine to keep you going. He obviously drinks the Diet Coke, A, for the taste, B, obviously for the caffeine. Okay. So instead of drinking 10, 12 cups of coffee a day, he drinks 12 cans of Diet Coke a day. Big deal. Here I am. No, 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 Brittany. No, no, I, no, no, don't, don't. Don't dump this, Brittany. Don't dump this. Here I am. I'm holding a Diet Coke in my hand right now. It's already half gone. I've been sipping it slowly throughout the show. Here it is. Here it is. Now, like I'm injecting myself with heroin, I need my fix. Here it is. Here it is, guys. Here it is. I'm injecting myself. Here it is. There it is. I can keep going on the show. I can keep going on. I got my fix. <laughs> Boy, they got me. CNN, they got us. They got us. We're substance abusers. We're drug addicts. This is pathetic. I mean, this, this is why CNN is no longer the Clinton News Network. Say what you want about CNN. Hey, that was some pretty good propaganda back in the day. Now... It's the crap news network. But think of all the exercise the president gets pushing the button on his desk so a butler brings him a Coke. The soda was at the center of a mini controversy back in the spring. Trump can't even bother to use a coaster at the Resolute desk for his hourly Coca-Cola injection. Uh, hold on, 
Hold on. I didn't quite do it for you. Let me get my injection now. Hold on. Mm. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. All right, that'll, that'll, that'll take care of me. That'll keep me going for another hour. All right. All right. Yes. And they never, they thought it was cool. Yeah. Didn't he smoke cigarettes? He Obama? smoked cigarettes. He smoked nearly a dozen cigarettes a day. Okay. And so why see, didn't you do a piece on that? Well, no, they did. And they said how cool it was. Oh, so it's cool. Oh, it was cool. He was like James Dean with the way the cigarette was in his oh, mouth and everything. Oh, I thought they would do something about him oh, getting lung no, cancer. Oh, no, no. How about when he did like cocaine that? when he was young? How he snorted uh, 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 half of Colombia up his nose when he was a young... Honestly, when he was uh, in college and stuff. No, the CNN wouldn't touch that. No. This guy has Diet Cokes every day, and all of a sudden, the guy's a heroin junkie. It's it's incredible. I'm telling you, it's incredible. And you guys call yourself a freaking news network? By the way, I digress, but I need to mention this. During Thanksgiving, Sarah Huckabee Sanders baked a chocolate pecan pie. It's a southern tradition. She actually takes a picture of it, puts it up on Twitter, Facebook, whatever. CNN says, we don't believe the pie is authentic. They send out their analyst... April Ryan, and she actually tweets back, prove it. And then for days, listen to this, CNN is demanding that, I don't know how you can prove that you baked the cake, but anyway, they're saying you have to prove that you baked the pie or else we just caught you in a big lie. And they were literally trying to, they were calling this pie gate. And they were going on day after day after day whether Sarah Huckabee Sanders had actually baked a real, true chocolate pecan pie, they say she brought it from a store, from a local bakery. This is how freaking deranged they are to bring this man down. But when it comes to illegal immigrants abusing and squandering your taxpayer dollars, you won't see this story anywhere but here on the Kuna Report, and that's coming next. 255 here on the great WRKO. Okay, story out of Worcester. Um, my friends, I'm telling you, we're being hosed. We really are, and it's time we said enough is enough. Okay, listen to this. So, an illegal immigrant, a woman, Esther Akuya, 49 years of age, uh, a, she's from Ghana. Now, just so that you understand, Ghana, literally, is one of the poorest countries on the face of the earth. It is constantly there, borderline star- starvation and malnutrition. In fact, it is so poor that the government there has a hard time paying, I kid you not, for the soccer cleats, the shorts, and the jerseys for their team to compete for qualifications in the World Cup. Okay? That's how poor Ghana is. So you would think that somebody who, I don't care, illegally, legally, you somehow make it into the United States, you would be kissing the ground that you walk on. No, 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 no. Esther Akuya, who owns something called Esther's Fashion Paradise, as I said, in Worcester, Mass., by the way, I'm looking at the picture of the store. The woman sells everything. It's got groceries, foods, clothes, uh, jewelry, uh, everything. I mean, I'm not kidding. Body, what is it? Soap, I mean, you, just everything. Supplies. This, this woman, I guess, sells everything. Anyway, she just pled guilty, listen to this, to food stamp abuse. And in particular, she was running a racket with the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP, in which, get this out, get this out, okay, check this out. She was convincing SNAP recipients to trade their benefits for cash. So what she would do is and say, okay, you collect food stamps. You come to me and I'll give you 50 cents. For every dollar of a food stamp, I give you 50 cents. You give me the food stamp. 
and then I'm going to send it to the federal government, and they're going to pay me the full dollar on the stamp. And she managed to scam the feds, listen to this, to the tune of over $300,000. And so she has now pled guilty to several charges, including aiding and abetting food stamp fraud, conspiracy and trafficking counterfeit goods. She's expected to be sentenced March 7th next year. She will face possibly two to three years prison time. But here is the kicker. Here's the kicker. They don't want to deport her. They say they may deport her. They may not deport her because they feel sorry for people from Ghana. Now, if the corner man was from Ghana, and by the way, how did she end up owning her own store? Grocery slash uh, convenience, clothing, jewelry store, whatever. Uh, to me, I, I'm very suspicious how she managed to get the money for that. I'm thinking drugs, but let that go. This is the Cooner Man. If I happen to own my own store in the United States and I'm from Ghana, very simple. Hey, Ishmael, how are you today? I love America. Ishmael, can I have two packs of Marlboros, please? I love America. Uh, Ishmael, can I buy some scratch tickets, please? I love America. They go, I, I, I don't know what is with Ishmael. Every time I talk to him, all this guy keeps saying is... The voice of Boston is... You! 680 WRKO Boston, 93.7 WEEI HD2 Lawrence Boston. It's 3 o'clock.